Welcome to episode three of the Real Estate Insider, all about the Edmonton housing market. I'm Jen McFillin with Remax River City, and today we are going to be talking about what's happening with home prices in Edmonton. Are they crashing? I mean, if you're reading the headlines, it seems like things aren't looking too good, and maybe we should all just stay away from the housing market. <clears throat> I'm going to go over some data today, and I think that you may not agree with what's happening in the headlines once you see what's actually happening in the market. Okay, so to answer this question, what's happening with home prices in the Edmonton real estate market, we are going to look at three segments of resale homes the luxury segment, the move up segment, and the starter segment. And the reason I'm splitting it into segments is because that's where I think this market is going. I think we're going to be going into a very, very segmented market. I don't think we're going to be across the board a seller's market, balanced market, or buyer's market. It's really going to depend on where you are um, in the market. There are definitely going to be certain segments that are more competitive than other segments. In addition to those segments, it's also going to depend on the neighborhood, but we're not getting to the neighborhood portion of the market. For this video, we're just going to really focus on these segments. And within these segments, we're going to look at the median sold price, the average days on market. So how long are homes taking to sell? And I'm going to give you data all the way from January and the average from 2021. And lastly, the sold to list ratio are there any deals out there? Are homes selling below 100% of list price or above? We're going to look at that data so you can kind of see how hot the demand is. Okay, so jumping right in, we're going to talk about the single family detached homes in the luxury market. I've defined this market with some preset criteria, um, but just to simplify it, let's just say it's a $900,000 plus for detached single family homes. Okay, so looking at the first chart, the red dot is 2021 and the rest of it is the monthly data for 2022. So as you can see in this chart, uh, 2021 had very high median sold prices. Compared to 2022, we only surpassed them for that one month in February. And then after that, we tapered down and we've only seen a slight increase, but it's been basically flat. So uh, moving on to luxury average days on market, it was high in 2021 and things look like they've improved in 2022. Uh, they're both the same until we hit March and then things just started moving faster. I think when we see the next slide, it's going to tell you why. Next slide, sold to list ratios. So in 2021, you saw some of the best deals. February, there was a little bit more of a deal, but basically the same as 2021. And then from there, we started to see the climb. Uh, the climb of sold to list ratio is saying that there's either higher demand or this market is pricing their homes better, closer to what the market is willing to pay. As you can see in May, surprisingly, when the rest of the market seems to be going down, especially when you're looking at the headlines, the luxury market has increased. So that's great for the sellers in the luxury market. For buyers, you're going to just have to move a little bit quicker to get those deals. Okay, moving on to the move up segment. So in the move up segment, um, talking about single family detached homes, I have a bunch of criteria, but simply put, we're going to say this is 500,000 to 700,000 newer homes. I think the uh, low year was 2015 for this because it seems to be very popular for the move up buyers. So going into the median sold prices, uh, started out 2021, um, pretty flat into January. And then we started to see the slight climb, slight climb. And it really climbed in March, a little bit in April. And then we start to see it come down, but it's not coming down 
steeply. That tells me that there's still quite a bit of demand in this market. Um, there's probably some uncertainty with the interest rates rising, but the interest rates are still good and your variable rates that you can get are still good. This uh, interest rate hike is mostly going to be affecting people with uh, high ratio mortgages or higher debt load. It'll be harder. They'll have less cash to be spending on mortgage payments because any debt servicing that they're going to have is also going to be going up with the higher interest rates. Okay, so the average days on market were pretty high in um, 2021. January seems to have peaked and then it comes straight down. Even the days on market is coming down into May, but it's starting to flatten. The sold to list ratio for uh, move up segment, what an improvement we've seen from 2021 where you could get deals. Um, then after January, everything is 100% above list price. So there's that 100% marker and you can see February to May. In May, we were right on the line, but we are still above the 100% um, of list price. So this market is still quite competitive. It's coming down and maybe in the future months with further increases, it won't be so competitive. We'll be back to the sold to list ratio being under 100%. Okay, moving on to the starter home market. Um, just like with the other segments, I have other criteria, but basically put, I don't have an age uh, of the home restriction on my criteria. And the price of the starter homes we're saying is between 300 and 450,000. So the median sold prices for these was pretty low in 2021 and in January, but then the steep incline comes in February, and March, and it is busy. In April, it looks like we tapered off. We picked up a little bit in May. So I'm starting to see, I mean, it's only two months, but a two months trend is starting to see that we might just be flattening in that category. So I don't really see a huge price drop at all here. The days on market, it was taking a lot longer in January for things to sell and, the, and then it really improved going into the rest of 2022. I mean, days on market, could also the weather could also affect days on market so january was pretty cold so i'm not surprised to see that high number but um as the market heated up and the temperature heated up the days on market really really dropped and it looked like a low so far in april and flattening in may so the sold ratio in 2021 was under 100 percent of list price and it stayed under 100 percent of list price all the way until March, where it really peaked and is slowly starting to come down to about 100% of list price. This is great news um, for buyers wanting to get their starter home because it's showing that demand is softening, but you're not really getting great deals. So it's also good for sellers that if you're pricing your home right, there is a good chance you will be selling it at list price or just above or just below. So where are we headed? Well, I think we are headed to more of the same. The Bank of Canada has a laser focus on bringing inflation down to 2%. So until they start seeing signs of the hot market cooling, not just in housing, but overall, they are going to continue to be aggressive with the rate hikes. Still, the rates aren't that high. And if you're choosing a variable mortgage, payments will still be relatively low. I mean, we're at what, four, four and a half percent for a fixed rate mortgage and still quite a bit lower than that for a variable mortgage. We have, we still have very low inventory. And as you can see by the data so far, though this is a lagging indicator, there is still pretty strong demand. It's just buyers are getting a little bit more time to choose the home that they want. And there's less competition. So we're starting to see houses going in multiple offers, very few multiple offers or no multiple offers at all, which can be nice for buyers. So what are the things to watch? The things to watch are inflation, 
inventory and the supply chain. As inflation comes down, we are going to see less interest rate hikes and the market might heat up a little bit. Uh, depends how high the inventory has gotten. The higher the inventory means the less demand that we're having. And so it could be a softer market. And then the supply chain. So the supply chain issues are really affecting new home builds. Um, when new homes aren't available for people at Edmonton to buy, they're getting pushed towards the resale homes. And that's what creates a lot of demand, especially in the Edmonton market. Once the supply chain issues are resolved and builders have lots available and they can turn over houses in the six to eight months that they used to be able to, we might see demand soften in the resale market. Overall, I don't see a crash coming in the Edmonton real estate market. I think what we're seeing is the excess demand where you have all those multiple offers and home prices really skyrocketing. I see the excess demand is starting to diminish, but we still have demand and we still have low inventory. So if you're looking to get into the market is a good time, or even if you're looking to sell, the home prices are still seem to be holding steady, but you're not going to be able to be aggressive with your pricing. You need to be really realistic with what the market can bear because there are higher interest rates. That wraps up today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please click that like button and share this video with your friends. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that little bell so you don't miss out on these videos I'm posting weekly. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.